Alright, so to start this project, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a mat for your Cricut machine, heat press tape, some sublimation paper. I use the A sub sublimation paper. And then you're going to need your freshener parts. So I will show you what this is. I bought this. It came in a package of 150. So you get the string like here. So you have to cut those apart. And then here are your fresheners that you're going to get. I looked up several of these and this one was the thicker one and I wanted a little bit of a thickness to this. So I will show you what this looks like. So it looks like this, pretty plain, but it's got a nice thickness to it. It's not going to break. It's not very flimsy. It's nice and thick. So that's what you're going to need and you're going to need a sublimation printer as well. I will leave all my supplies that I use down in the description below. So let's get started. All right, so I'm going to show you start to finish how to do these. I'm starting in Design Space. You can use this in Canva as well, but I'm so used to Design Space that I'm going to show you it this way. So I'm starting with a, a blank project here. I'm going to go to Upload. And I wanted to show you if you're not familiar with getting stuff from Design Bundles into Design Space. So I'm going to do that first part here. If you are familiar with it, please feel free to skip ahead. So I purchased these from Design Space. I'm going to show you really quick. I purchased a whole bunch of these and I thought they were really cool. You can see they were like $2 a piece, so they really were not that expensive. So with this one right here, I wanted to do this one, Alcohol Ink Air Freshener. So I thought that looked really cool. So all you got to do is click Download Files, click on your uh, little download button there, and yours might be different than mine. So it automatically shows me right here in my download file. If you don't see this, you have to find on your computer where it says download. So all I'm going to do is double click that and it's going to open up my download file. Now I can get rid of this and show you guys the next part. So as you see here, it has it right here and it's in a zip file. So what you want to do is double click on that and this is all the images that you just purchased. Now I'm going to shrink this just a little bit so we can see these both together. Makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to take this and find them. So I'm going to show you really quick what they look like. So this is what this first one looks like. It's beautiful, but it's a circle. I don't want a circle, so I'm going to find the one that's just a square. So I believe it's this one, the R2.7. So we're going to look at it really quick and I'll show you what that one looks like. So this one turned out to be a square, like I said. So I'm going to use these ones. So every one I'm going to be using is going to say the R2.7. Uh, the other one I believe is just a lot bigger than the last one I showed you. So all you gotta do is go to upload image here and then go back to your download file. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and then just grab the one you want and throw it in here. I'm going to go ahead and click complex and then I'm gonna click continue. Then if you wanted to get rid of any parts in the background, which I do not, I'm going to leave it the way it looks. If you did, you want to go ahead and click erase and do it that way. But these files already come finished for you. So all I'm doing is uploading them into Design Space. So I'm going to click uh, Apply. And then I'm going to always get this one, print then cut. You can see this one, the cut image, if you were just cutting this image out, nothing would show up. You want to make sure that you click on the print then cut. Then you want to make an image name. So they named this one already, but I don't want it to be named that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all of this and I'm going to leave it say freshener. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this for every one. So I'm going to just select it and I'm going to copy it. So for every one, it's going to be named freshener. I'm going to upload it. And then that's how you do it. I'll show you one more time. So here it is here, upload image. I'm going to want to go and find the one that says the 2.7. So here it is here. So I'm going to take that, throw it in there, go to complex, continue. Don't have to do anything here. Apply and continue. Make sure you click the print and then cut and then just change your image name. You can do it to whatever you want. If you want to do an air green freshener, whatever you're going to remember that it is and then click upload. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. That's all I did with these other ones here. I just found the size that I wanted and I put them in that way. So I'm going to go ahead, fast forward this part so you guys don't have to see it, but I'm going to put every single one of them that I got in here so you can kind of look and see if you like these. 
All right, so now I have them all in here. You can see what they look like. I thought they were really beautiful, so I chose these. A couple of things with these. I'm just going to pick a few of these really quick and show you what they look like when I print them out. So I'm just going to grab a few of these ones here. And also, if I go into up, uh, View All, I will show you. I got some other ones, too, that are really awesome that I already printed out. So I had these beautiful butterfly ones. But then I also got these really beautiful sunflower ones for my daughter that I thought she'd like. So I did those. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'll add that to canvas and then I'll click view and then I'll show you what they look like. I'm going to make my screen bigger so we can see what this looks like. So it'll bring all of them up for me. The only thing you're going to want to do with this is just change the size of it. Oops, so for whatever reason it didn't save my other one. So I'm going to go back to upload and then just pick the other ones that I wanted. So we'll do just a couple of these. We'll pick one of these. Beautiful hummingbirds add to canvas. Sorry, I'm not sure what I pushed that I didn't make it come. So we'll show you what these all look like. It's going to take a minute because it's just a little bit bigger images on here. So we're going to go ahead and shrink this. We'll shrink, shrink this one just for the purposes of the video. So I will show you what these look like really quick. I absolutely love these watercolor ones. They look amazing. So right off the bat, this one. So it looks like a circle here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one just because that extra is, you're not going to see that around the edge. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink these up. So for my particular uh, image that I'm going to be using, um, this is the size that I'm going to be doing. So I'm doing 3.2 by 4.2. So I'm going to click on the first one, unlock it. And then we'll change it to be the 3.2 by 4.2. And I'm doing it a little bit bigger than my actual freshener. Um, but I'll show you why when we go to the heat press machine. Pretty much the reason is, is I just want a little bit bigger than my freshener. But again, I will show you when we get to my heat press why I did that. So I'm just going to go ahead and go in here and change all of these to that size. 3.2 by 4.2. But you want to make sure that it's the size that you want. So I will leave the link down below for my fresheners that I purchased. And then you can kind of go off of there, but test it. Just because I'm using a specific size doesn't mean it's going to be the same size for you. So you always want to check that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and change all of these to the correct size. And then I'll show you the next step. All right, so I think I got them all. I'm just going to go ahead and click on each one of these, making sure I got them all correct, which I did. Okay, so basically the only thing that you have to do with this is click uh, make it. Um, so you're going to see a thing on the side here. It's giving me a little bit of a warning here. It says low resolution. So it's saying that just because it's going to be printing it. So when I used and I printed this already, they turned out absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to show you what they actually look like. That's all you got to do. So if you wanted to make your own, like I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to click upload. I actually got a picture of my dog, Ray, and I printed one of him out. Oh my gosh, it is the cutest thing. So this, this is my puppy. His name is Ray. I have another dog that I have to do one. His name is Baxter. So I wanted to make one of these for my daughter for her car because it's actually her puppy. So I did the same thing. I just resized it. You can use any photo that you want. So if you have a best friend, if you have a boyfriend, if you have a girlfriend, if you have friends pictures, if you have an animal picture, you can do whatever you want. You just upload it into Design Space and you just resize it. But you want to make sure the quality of the picture is good. So I'm going to delete that one since I already have one of those, but I will show you what that looks like. Other thing you want to do is make sure you just resize it. That's it. Click make it and let's have some fun and print these out. So on this side here, I don't know why I have to change my settings. It always goes to eight and a half by uh, 14. My printer only goes to eight and a half by 11. So I have to change that. So just in case yours pops up like that, make sure you're doing it the correct size. The other thing that you have to do with these, if you wanted to make these uh, double sided, is to make sure you do two of these. So it says project copies. I'm going to do two because I want two of each one. So I want two of, I want two of these images and I want two of these images. So I hope that makes sense. And the other thing you have to do is mirror your image because we're going to be using heat press. So anytime you're using your heat press, you always want to make sure you mirror your image. So I'm going to go ahead, send this to my printer. It's going to cut out two of these, so two exact ones. So I can put one on the front side and one on the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. I'm going to send it to my printer. 
and I will let you guys know in the comments down below what printer I use. It is the absolute best. It was a regular can um, Epson printer and I converted it into a sublimation printer. Very, very simple. Before you even use it, put sublimating ink into it. That's the only thing that you have to do. I think mine is a 2800, but I will double check and I will leave it in the supplies down below and I will leave all of my supplies down below for you to look at. So for mine, mine is actually this one. Oh, here we go. Epson EcoTank 2800. That's what I have. So I have two of them, actually. I have a colored printer that I used a regular ink for. And then I changed this one to a subbing printer. So I have the EcoTank 2800. So I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to go here where it says add bleed. I take that off. So here's the other spot you can do it. You can make copies. You can do two right here. So that's what actually I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut out two of these and then I'll do two of these as, whoops, two of these as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click, click print. It's going to print two of those for me. But then you also want to make sure you're printing your second image as well. So I want to go up to the first one that it just missed. Go to send to printer. You can see it right here. Maybe hear my printer in the background. It's going. Change it again take it rid of bleed and then I'm going to make two of these and print it so once that's done printing you just want to take your mat your regular green mat I would suggest if you have a very sticky green mat like a brand new mat I would use a blue mat you do not want very very sticky you just want it sticky enough that it's gonna hold your paper down then I use this heavy cardstock right here. Uh, I went into browse all materials and I typed in cardstock and I found this heavy cardstock 100 pound. That works perfect for my paper. Uh, another thing you need to know, and again I will leave everything in the description down below, uh, you need subbing paper. Very, very important. You cannot just use regular paper. So I will leave all my supplies down below and I'll let you know which supplies that I use. So once those are done printing, I'm gonna put it onto my Cricut machine. So I'm, I'm gonna get started with that and then I will be back and I will show you how to use these at your heat press. All right, so here is my heat press. I have the HTV heat press. This thing is absolutely amazing. I love it. I've done a few videos on this already, so if you're new to this, go back and check those out, but I absolutely love it. There's absolutely no pressure on here that you have to twist or turn or pull down or anything with this. You just slide it in and out. It's absolutely amazing. So I have it set at 385 degrees for 45 seconds. That is what works for me. Here are some of my images that I'm going to be using. I put them together so that I know that I would be using one on each side. But here's just a few of them that I have so far. And then this really pretty flower. So what I'm going to do is take one of my pieces here and I'll leave the link down below you can see it's very thick this isn't thin this is very nice and thick and before remember when I told you that I would tell you why I made it a little bit bigger is because of this so here's an image I'm gonna place this over top but now I have a little bit of room on each side to play with that if I wanted up higher or lower or anything like that then I'm gonna take a piece of heat tape right here I'm gonna put this upside down this is going to make sense in a second. And then I'm going to tape it. Before, when I wasn't taping this and I actually just put the um, Teflon paper over it, it would just move. So what I do is just take a piece of heat tape, now that I know I have it in the spot that I want it, and I just do that, just like that. So I'm going to take another one and then just show you and do the same thing. So I have this one. There's really no right or wrong. just depends where you want to put your image on here. So it's like that. Same thing, I'm going to carefully take it, place it down flatly. Let me adjust my camera for you guys really quick. I'm just going to put it down flatly on here and then just take another piece of heat tape and go over. You can do like four or five or six of these at a time. Whatever will fit on there. So depending on which way you want your image to go, kind of like it that way. But just like that. Make sure that you put your uh, image up. So I'm going to put it down there. And the, you don't have to do this. This is just what I was doing. And it just helps a little bit to keep it in place. But again, it's just a little trick if you wanted to do it. So I'm just going to do one more on here and show you really quick. Take another one that I don't have. And then just do the same thing. Take the image and line it up. 
It just helps that you have a little bit of a border around it. I think if you did it the exact size, it would be a little bit hard to kind of figure out where you want to put it. But like I said, that's up to you how you want to do that. So I'm just putting a piece of heat tape. It's not necessary on there. Take my Teflon tape. I'm sorry, my Teflon paper. Put it over here. See, when I did this before and I put the thing on here very carefully even, it still moved all my stuff. So I didn't like that. That's why I have the uh, tape on there. So watch this. So this, I love this part. So I'm going to close this and it automatically goes down for me and as you can see it's counting down the time so I have 42 seconds, 41 seconds, so on and so forth when it's done it's going to automatically open up top and I can just pull it out and it works so simple there's no uh, pressure that you have to figure out on here you just need to know the time and the temperature which I told you so yours might be thicker or thinner than mine so please test them out kind of see what works for you um, but I have mine at 385 for the 45 seconds so I'm gonna let this count down and then I will show you the next step when it's done alright so now it's done it's automatically gonna lift up I didn't do anything let some heat out. You saw that, so it's going to be very hot. And then I will show you what this looks like. You can put a pair of gloves on if you want, but this isn't too bad of a project for me to worry about burning my hands. So I'm just going to carefully take this tape off. Woo! That one was pretty. So I'm going to take all this off and I will show you what they look like. Just be careful that you don't burn your fingers on this. Wow, that is a very vibrant color on there. Oh, ooh! Look at that one. That that's showing up how vibrant that is. My goodness. And these beautiful watercolor ones. Wow. All right, so I have those. Now I'm going to take the same exact image and I'm going to match them up but do it the same way. So I'm going to take the back side of this and put it on top of here. And it's going to kind of match up where I was with the last one. And then do the same thing with the tape. Again, you don't have to do this. It just kind of helps my stuff stay in place. And another thing I didn't mention is I have one of these Teflon papers on the bottom too because I'm trying to keep my bottom of this um, so it doesn't, it doesn't bleed at all. So I'm just going to take my next images, match those up, and then I'll do the same thing. But you want to make sure that you throw these pieces away that you don't try to reuse them because all the ink is off of those. So you want to toss those out. Let me just match these guys up really quick. So here's this one. You can see how the color difference is, how this is very light and how vibrant this one came out. So I'm just going to take it, take the white part, and put that on top. And then just flip it. Very simple. I love this one. This one has to be my favorite one. So I'm going to take the same image and I'm going to put it on the back here. So I'm going to take the same image, make sure I do it flat side, the white side down on it and the color side. Flip it upside down and then just put my tape on there. And believe it or not, I cannot find this other green one. I'm not sure where I put it. So I will have to wait to redo the green one, but we're going to show you this one really quick. So then you want to take your paper. You can use uh, butcher paper even if you wanted to, but you want to sandwich them together. All I'm going to do is close this. It automatically goes down for the 45 seconds. And then I'll show you the next part after this. Very simple. Very easy to do. Cost me probably 20 cents to create the whole thing. And I'm going to be selling these. I'm going to be trying them for $4 a piece. We will see because it's my time and my supply. So I'm going to try it at $4. I will let you guys know uh, if you've done these before or if you know anything about these. Leave it in the comment down below um, how much you've seen them before, how much you would sell them for, what images you would like to see on these. Like I said, I did my dog one and that one turned out really, really amazing. So this works really well. So I'm going to let this finish up and then I'll show you the last, last step to this one. All right, guys. So here comes the fun part. So I finished these. This is what they look like. They are double-sided. And actually, funny story, I'm going to tell you the truth because I always tell you the truth. Remember when I said I couldn't find the green one? Well, I kind of messed up on that one. I did one side green, and I thought I flipped it, but I didn't. So I have the one side green here, and then I have this one here. So I kind of messed up on that one, but you know what? That's okay, because when this spins in the wind, it's going to look kind of neat that it's double-sided. But then I also have these that I cut out. I thought they were really cute, 
And then, oh my goodness, look at how vibrant these look. My daughter absolutely loves this one. She wants to keep it. And here is the one that I did of my dog, Ray. I thought that turned out really, really cute. My daughter's going to love to put that in there. And then you just cut this to whatever size you want it to be. So I'm going to show you that really quick. So here's how it comes. I will show you how it comes. It's not pre-cut. You have to cut this yourself. So you want to find... Oh, that's the fun part of it. You have to find one of the ends instead of just clipping it. I wish they would have actually given you pieces already cut because it's a trick to finding the beginning of one of these. Oh, here we go. So I found the beginning. What I actually did before is I just take it and I double it. And you can make it how short, how long, whatever you want, but I just kind of guesstimate it and then I cut it and super simple so you want to match up the ends here and then take your part at the top that looks like this and then you just stick it right through the hole and then you pull it through and then you have it on both sides so it's like that and then you have this side so you want to match these guys up as best as you can open this part up and put those two pieces through so just like that so it looks like that so you have this nice little tie at the top. So you want to pull that kind of tight. And then taking these two pieces, <coughs> make sure they're straight and they're both going the same way. And then tie it as you would like a balloon or something. And then just take it and pull your knot really, really tight. I mean, just like yank at it. Because what you want to do is you want to cut those little bunny ears off the end get as close as you can to the knot. So that's why I say get really, really tight with it. So it looks like this. Here's a double-sided one. But it looks just like that. And then this is very, very stretchy. So you can take this and put this around your uh, rear mirror. So just like that. So the best thing about these is you can spray it with whatever fragrance you want. Like if you have a uh, perfume that you really like, a bath and body work fragrance that you really like, you can spray it. Or what I like to do is actually take fragrance oils and if they're clear, you can take them actually and drop them on there. Or I would suggest going to the dollar store, getting one of those little pump bottles that you spray, put some water in the spray bottle and then put a couple of drops of whatever scent you like and then you can always just go back and spray it with whatever you want so let's say i did this with lavender and then the lavender stopped working after a couple weeks and i wanted to use let's say grape um i would just go ahead and spray it with something else as long as it is clear it won't go on here so you want to make sure that your fragrance whatever you're using is clear so these were really fun to make i have to finish these put the top on this but they were super fun to make i have these other ones already done with the ties on the top but again this has to be my favorite one just how vibrant the color looks on here so Guys, I hope you like this video tutorial. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribers of mine already. I'm going to be doing a ton more videos on sublimation and Cricut and just every kind of craft you can think of. So look down below. I leave all the supplies down there. Leave any questions that you might have. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Take care.